Audit committees have a host of critical responsibilities. One of the most important is oversight of the external auditor. So important, in fact, that Section 301 of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act mandates that audit committees of public companies be directly responsible for the appointment, compensation, and oversight of the work of the external auditor. One of the changes that came about with Sarbanes-Oxley was the definition of the role of the audit committee in interacting with the external auditor. The audit committee is responsible for hiring, evaluating, and interacting with the external auditor. Audit committees put themselves in the shoes of investors working to bring this critical oversight to the complex and evolving world of financial reporting. While audit committees bring many strategies and may take varying approaches to this important oversight work, they do consistently note that part of their responsibility includes interacting with company management as well as the external auditor. We are not alone in our responsibilities. Management has a responsibility to us because they see the auditors on a day-to-day -day basis. Our responsibility is oversight. Our audit committee is very involved in oversight and compensation of the external auditor. We do so with two guiding principles. Uh, the first is to set expectations for the external auditor, and the second is to establish the best channels of communication that we can. Understanding your role in internal control over financial reporting and understanding how that's changing, not so significantly from year to year, and understanding how the management and the auditors and the audit committee considered the risk areas, deployed resources against the risk areas, agreed on the significance of the risk areas is a good starting place. And so I think that's one of the, one of the ways that you can feel pretty comfortable in doing it without being you know, in the business on a daily basis. Notably, as audit committees have implemented their responsibilities under Sarbanes-Oxley regarding oversight of the external audit firm, they have also increasingly disclosed to investors and other stakeholders how they are discharging these duties. Data collected over the past three years by the Center for Audit Quality and Audit Analytics shows that companies in the S&P 1500 are increasingly disclosing the considerations used in appointing the audit firm in their proxy statements. Successful oversight relies heavily on effective communications and mutually agreed upon expectations between the audit committee and the external auditor. Audit committee chairs consistently underscore the importance of a strong relationship with the external audit team along with robust and ongoing communications to effectively execute oversight responsibilities and provide support for strong audit quality. Management and overseeing of the external audit relationship is really one of the fundamental components that any audit committee faces. And there are a variety of tools that we use, but uh, probably preeminent of all of them is uh, the frequency of interaction with the lead partner. So in my capacity as a, a former chair of the audit committee, I spent a great deal of time outside of audit committee meetings interacting with the uh, lead partner and even select lieutenants on the engagement team. Those discussions frequently served as a very valuable springboard for getting into the really difficult judgment areas and processes that our company was working through that they were attempting to audit. In my case, what I typically do is I will meet with uh, the independent auditor before every uh, audit committee meeting. At the regular audit committee meetings, we do ask for a report from the independent auditor on the status of the audit and how that compares with the audit plan that the audit committee reviewed and approved earlier in the year. So we're tracking that as they go. And finally, at the end of the year, uh, or around the time we consider uh, appointment or reappointment, um, we think about uh, um, the, the form of uh, questionnaire uh, or the tools that are available to us to evaluate the performance of the external auditor. So we, we, this is a year-round activity and something that uh, uh, we do pretty routinely. As an audit committee chair, I've always encouraged my team members and the management and the uh, auditors to have an open dialogue. And I would have one-on-one -on -one calls with the auditors before the quarter ends and also with management as far as any issues are concerned. Partly it's because living in the technology world I've lived in the last 15 years, many times complex issues come up and you can't wait for the quarter end 
to resolve those issues, but the quarter has already ended. When it comes to compensation, audit committees continue to evolve and adapt to the changing needs of a company and economic conditions. The link between compensation and the quality of the audit is multifold. It starts with understanding the scope of what the audit firm is, is intended to do for you. It also includes an understanding of benchmarks around how our firm, our companies, um, audit fees are in relation to others comparable to us in the marketplace. In my role as an audit committee chair, I want to make sure an external auditor is fairly compensated for the work they perform so they can bring the expertise and the geographic coverage to execute their audit. It's not about getting the lowest price, it's about getting a fair price so they're fairly compensated and management also believes it's a fair engagement letter and opportunity to work together. The firm has a track record of serving. They have a track record of fees which need to be taken into consideration. So the annual appointment process and compensation process is an updating of that with management playing an appropriate role. I think it's really important to understand what are the drivers of the fees. And one of the important components of that is looking at sort of the hours that are involved in providing the audit and putting that in context of the overall fee in proportion to the size and complexity of the organization that you're looking at. And once you have that context, you can look at it in relation to other similar companies. But most importantly, I think what's really important is to look at the overall quality of the audit. I've also found that it's less about fees, it's more about what skill sets the auditors bring to the table, because it's a competitive uh, world. I mean, if you're just uh, trying to lower the fees, you can always go to other firms. But what I've always told the management in my role is make sure you pick the auditors that, that that are more akin to the business you're doing. They have the expertise, uh, and they have done other, other clients similar to your size before. The question of compensation of the external auditor, particularly as you look at some of the largest, uh, most significant financial institutions on the globe, is a very interesting one. And it does require a meticulous study and analysis. I think in general, uh, we're trying to make sure that we get the best people who are incredibly attentive to our needs, and uh, we try and align that with the compensation. With greater focus on their important work, more and more audit committees are voluntarily disclosing information to investors and others about their oversight of the external auditors. The 2016 Audit Committee Transparency Barometer shows that audit committees of companies of all sizes are providing more information about audit firm compensation and audit firm selection and evaluation. Since 2014, there has been double-digit growth across the board in the number of audit committees that provide information on criteria considered when evaluating the audit firm, as well as increases in the number of proxy statements that explicitly state that the audit committee is involved in selection of the audit engagement partner. There's also been an increase in disclosures about the length of time the auditor has been engaged. Well, the issue of appointing, uh, compensating, and overseeing the independent auditor is really fundamental to the responsibility of the audit committee. Uh, I think everything we do as audit committee members should be to reinforce to the independent auditor who their client is, so that there isn't the confusion between is it management, is it the audit committee, is it someone else. So I think that's key in terms of the way we behave.